Hi guys, I'm Jay from BornToProduce.com and this course is for people that don't know how to use Cubase. In other words, total beginners. So if you have Cubase AI, LE or Elements and don't have a clue how to use it, then this is for you. Over the next few lessons, I'm going to show you how to record a guitar, how to program in some drums, a piano, soft version of course, and then I'll show you how to mix it all together. So I'll see you then. So the first thing you see when you open up Cubase is the Steinberg Hub. And if you don't see it, you can always just come up to Hub and click Open here. And what this is, on the left hand side is News and Updates and that kind of thing. And on the right hand side is generally how you want to get started. So do you want to get started with a template or do you want to start with like an empty project? Now, of course, if you want to you know, record acoustic guitar or whatever, you can choose one of these templates and it will load up all the necessary inputs and tracks for you, maybe with some plugins on as well, or you can go to production. So for example, if you want electro production, it will already load you up with a load of uh, electronic drums and synths and put some plugins on there for you as well. But really, I don't think you're gonna to learn too much by using templates. So I'm gonna strongly advise you go to empty and follow along with me with this tutorial, because it's the same with anything, isn't it, folks? If you do something yourself, you're far more likely to learn it and remember it. So let's do that, go to empty, and down the bottom here, it's always best to go prompt for project location. So go to create, and now we're gonna choose where we're going to save this project. So I'm gonna to go to Keybase projects, now you can either create a new folder, or I'm just gonna use one I've already used before, which is AI course track. But feel free to select or create your own folder. And you'll also notice that the next thing we need to do is save the project because it says untitled at the moment. So file, save as, call it test or whatever it is you wanna do. So I wanna call this AI demo track. And the next thing we wanna do is just check that we're all set up settings wise. So let's go to studio, studio setup. And I wanna make sure that on under VST audio system, you've got your sound card selected. Now normally I would use my Yamaha Steinberg, I've got the UR22 Mark II. So just choose that if you have that or choose whatever sound card you have. I'm only using voice meter because it's a way of recording this tutorial, that's the only reason. And the only other thing really we need to do or to check at this point is project, project setup. So the project length is 10 minutes which is fine. Everything else is fine, but these are the things we need to pay attention to down here, is the recording file format. So we've got sample rate and bit depth, uh, just in case you're a complete newbie and you don't know what these terms mean. Basically what we're gonna be doing here is recording an analog signal, like a vocal or a guitar, and we're gonna get it into the computer, which is digital, and Cubase is a digital audio workstation, so it's gotta convert it from analog to digital. And basically the sample rate is how many times it samples the audio as it's coming in. The higher the rate, the more accurate the capture. But there is a point where you know you can oversample it and it doesn't make any difference or, or very, very little difference, I should say. So therefore you're, you're making your computer work harder and you're filling up your computer with more data that you don't need. So my recommendation is 44.1 kilohertz to keep things simple, that is, the computer is sampling the signal just over 44,000 times a second, and I recommend a bit depth of 24-bit. Wave file is fine, so it's not compressed or anything like that, and click OK. And don't worry guys, I'm not gonna go into the technical things in too much detail, I just want this to be a quick start guide for you guys that wanna know how to record your guitar or keyboard or whatever it is you've just purchased. Another useful tip here is help, and if you go to Cubase help, it will automatically fire up the internet for you and you'll get to the Cubase online manual which is really, really good. So just choose whichever version you have and the manual is superb, it really is good. So for those of you who have never seen this before, it could be quite daunting. Basically this is your project window and all of this will become apparent once we start making sounds and recording things. But this is where we arrange the track here, it's called the project window just move this over a little bit. This is just where our tracks will go. So audio tracks, MIDI tracks. This is obviously our mixer down here. This is called the lower zone. And we can change this from mixer or editor or chord pads, which we'll be doing later on. And you can turn off the lower zone up here. It's the middle button. So you get more 
space to see what you're working on. You've got the left zone, which you can also turn off here. And this is kind of like the inspector. And this gives you your settings for each track that you have. We haven't got any tracks at the moment. And the right side is kind of like the media bay or VST instruments, that type of thing. You can toggle these on or off. The transport bar is down the bottom, which is obviously start, stop, play, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if your left and right markers are not showing, literally just drag these three dots here, and you get more or less controls. Your tempo is down here. My tempo is going to be 128 for this demo track, so I'm just going to type it in and press return. Although you can use your mouse, hold, and scroll up or down to do the same thing. Got your input channels on the left and your main stereo out on the right, sometimes called master bus. We've got quantize up here. I'll and snap. I'll go into that in a second. And don't worry if none of this is making sense at the moment. Once we start bringing stuff into the project, it will. So let me show you that right now. In the right hand zone, go to media and you can either choose a sound from your own computer by clicking file browser or you can come to the inbuilt sounds, just go to loops and samples. Now you should have a few in here un under Cubase AI. Let's just go to drum loops. And that'll just do for demonstration purposes. Obviously there's all types of genres in there. Now you can see this is 130 BPM. So if I just drag this in to an empty space, first of all Cubase is going to automatically create me an audio track which is brilliant and, and put the audio on it but we're on 128 BPM here so if you zoom in which you can do by the G and the H keys zooms in and out Let's just put my cursor or playback cursor there and then when I zoom in it will stay on the screen keep the audio nicely on the screen now what it's done is actually you see these squiggles here that's actually automatically time stretched it for me because I have this button pressed down here align beats to project so make sure that is on and then whatever tempo loop you bring into the project it will automatically time stretch it for you now we can put this back to normal mode just by clicking this button up here musical mode you can basically toggle it on or off musical mode basically means auto time stretch so now this is in time i'm just going to take my loop so this at the top you've got your locators left and right and when it's blue it will loop and that's what this little button down here is it's called activate cycle. If I take this off, it will just carry on playing past the end. If I click loop on and go back to the start, it will, it will obviously loop or cycle. And it's in time. But let's say this button wasn't on and we brought it in in non-musical mode. It wouldn't be quite in time. You can see it just stops slightly before bar two and it would sound like this it's slightly out so i just wanted to show you that um, the other thing here we need to go through is the quantize which is basically about snapping to a grid i think it's cubase comes standard on bar which basically means when you want to move around some audio or cut some audio or whatever it will always snap to the bar so these are the bars, one, two, three, four, and the beats are in between. So one, two, three, four, what, four beats to a bar if we're working on a four, four signature here, which is the standard setup. But what if I want to move this around, not on a bar, I want, I want much finer control. So first of all, it's best to change it to use quantize, and then it will look at this quantize value here. So I can now move this around one eighth of a bar. Let's just put this back on musical mode. So it's now snapping to an eighth of a bar. And I can have it snap to a quarter note or a sixteenth note. Or I can turn off snap altogether with this one, this button here, or J is the shortcut. So if you want to align vocals, for example, I'm now completely free to zoom in and align these vocals as I wish without any snapping. And one final thing I wanna show you in this very, very first quick setup lesson is if you highlight the audio you want to loop, rather than having to draw you know, the loop in, let's say it's over here, rather than having to draw the loop in like this, and get it right, 
then go to the start, then clicking loop, then clicking play. Best thing to do is just highlight it and click Alt and P or Option and P. And Cubic is a brilliant shortcut. It's probably the best one. I use it all the time. It will automatically loop the region and start it playing for you as well and activate the cycle. So I hope this has given you a very, very brief introductory as to how Cubase works and what all the zones do and all the rest of it, how to get drum loops into your track. In the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you Groove Agent, which is the Cubase inbuilt drum machine. It's also a sampler as well. It's fantastic. I can't believe that it comes free with Cubase AI and LE, which are the free versions. That's a massive bonus. So I'll see you in the next one when we dive into that. See you soon.